FYF Sports, man. Hey, y'all. These NBA, NBA regular season awards are starting to drop. Regular season awards are here. They're starting to drop. Um, and a lot of people uh, got a lot of questions. There were a lot of people up for these awards. I mean, some of the biggest surprises. We had Chris Paul as a finalist for the MVP race. Again, he had a great season. He was deserving of being in that top five. Um, another award and one of the awards that a lot of people had their eye on was the Most Improved Player Award. Most Improved Player Award, we had Bam Adebayo, Brandon Ingram. Um, we had all types of players who were up for that particular award. Guys made leaps and bounds improving this season. As we know that the winner, Brandon Ingram, was announced as the Most Improved Player of the NBA. I'm here today to tell you why he wasn't the Most Improved Player. And I'm going to tell you the guy who got snubbed. As I just said, man, most improved player of the year award. We saw it went to Brandon Ingram. I'm here to tell you different. I'm here to tell you that the award should have went to a guy by the name of Devontae Graham, man. Man, this guy Devontae Graham, man, was able to drastically improve his stat line. Um, not even just drastically improve his stat line. He helped the Charlotte Hornets stay relevant this year. And, you know, I know this team, they added Terry Rozier. Um, they thought that Terry Rozier was going to be that guard that just kind of changed the game, made their backcourt elite. Terry Rozier ended up having a very, very disappointing season for some reason. And we've seen that with a lot, with a lot of players. Guys get paid. Guys lose that work ethic. Guys lose that drive. Terry Rozier was not the defensive stopper that we saw. He was not the scorer that we saw. Um, break down Eric Bledsoe in the playoffs when he was with the Celtics. And his game just disappeared. While his game disappeared, this guy right here, Devontae Graham, when we talking about a four-year guard out of Kansas, you know, he came into the NBA with, you know, little to no shot to, to make a roster. The man fought his way onto the team. Uh, whenever he got playing time in his first year, he actually put up big numbers. So going into this year, they gave him a little bit more of an opportunity, and he made the most of that opportunity, man. The man increased the scoring average from four points a game to 18 points a game and, and, that, and that's not that's not all right there he didn't just increase his score he increased his blocks per game his steals per game his assists per game all of that increased everything across the board increased everything blocks rebounds assists steals everything rent increased so his pro productivity and efficiency was all the same and he put himself you know he put himself in that category as some of the better guards in the eastern conference this is a player that you can build around now now charlotte they have questions at point guard again as terry rogier just proved to be extremely disappointing I don't know if they can rely on him being the point guard of the future. When you got a guy like Devontae Graham, you need to build around him immediately because when he becomes a free agent, you're going to have everybody offering him money. So you got to get this guy something to stay for. If, 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 they, can, if they lose Devontae Graham, it's only going to be their own fault. We know the Charlotte, Charlotte Hornets have the number three pick in the draft. I think they should take LaMelo Ball. Uh, find a way to replace Terry Rozier because Terry Rozier is again he's not as dynamic he's not as exciting he's not gonna put he's not gonna put fans in seats all right man if you pair an exciting guard like Devontae Graham with an exciting guard like LaMelo Ball man not only are you gonna sell tickets but you're actually making your you know you're propelling your backcourt you got one of the best playmaking and scoring backcourts in the NBA especially with a young duo like that and then you combine that with some of the other young talent that they got I mean, you, you can kind of change the whole dynamic of that Charlotte Hornets team. Uh, you guys, let me know what you think about that right there. Let me know what you think about Devontae Graham. You know, did he get snubbed? I think he got snubbed, man. You guys just got to let me know that right there. Um, but um, the man, I mean, again, in, in the, scoring in the NBA is not easy. There's a lot of players in the NBA who struggle just to drop 10 points a game. This man j jumped his scoring average from four to eight. Team, man four points to 18 and that's 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 absolutely ridiculous right there hey so big props big props to Devonte graham man. all right yeah and it's just other news man we obviously got the nba playoffs um today we i just watched uh, the miami heat take down uh the milwaukee bucks in game two 
of the NBA playoffs. Um, this is a this is a very very upsetting series, a very very upsetting season. I'm very very disappointed in the Bucks, um, primarily because they found no way to make adjustments. They made zero adjustments based on how Miami's been playing them. Miami's completely dedicated to building that wall, packing the packing the lane, making sure Giannis is not the player that beats him. They're allowing guys like Kyle Korver and Chris Middleton to get shots off from time to time, but for the most part. They haven't found any consistent rhythm on defense, especially due to that Miami Heat defense. So those guys, not only do they have a lot of great one-on-one -on -one defenders that they can throw a Giannis, when you got Derrick Jones Jr., when you have uh, Crowder, when you have Jimmy Butler, I mean, you even got Andre Iguodala. That's four bodies that you can continually put in front of Andre uh, or, or Giannis Antetokounmpo every possession. And then, then you also have a, your back line in the defense. You have Bam Adebayo, another physical presence that he constantly has to deal with. Uh, so they're not giving Giannis nothing easy. Uh, I, I honestly don't have, you know, an, unless Giannis can develop a jump shot over the next 24 hours, um, they're not going to be able to correct some of these problems. They're, they're not going to be able to... to um, account for the fact that Miami's packing the lane because Giannis is so one-dimensional in his game. Although he is the MVP, he's extremely one-dimensional in teams that can lock in defensively and stay disciplined to the game plan usually give this team trouble. And we we you know we saw that last year with the Toronto Raptors. Um you know when 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 they when they are uh, faced with against a team that understands team the you know the principles of team defense they definitely struggle man they definitely struggle we're gonna also i'm gonna check in let me check the score of the houston rockets game i know that game is going on currently right now uh, we're gonna jump into that game look like the third quarter just ended we got houston up 85 80 man you guys like i say i don't know the outcome of the game just yet by the time this video comes out I'm sure we will know the outcome by then, but man, this guy, Chris Paul, man, he has definitely, definitely led this team, man. And just going into the third quarter, um, Gilkers Alexander's having a great game with 16 points. Chris Paul, nine points, 10 assists. Um, I thought he would do, you know, do a little bit more. That's about the numbers that he had at halftime. So he went a quarter without putting up uh, much. Uh, Gallinari's kind of quiet today. So man, you know, when it, in these seven game series, anything can happen. I wouldn't be surprised if at the end of the night, I'm saying that OKC can win this game because we saw how Houston played in a close game in, in game six. Um, so again, I, I really want to get your guys' input on this Houston series, regardless of who wins. Do you think, who? you know, I don't really think either team matches up with the Lakers fairly well. I think Houston matches up with the Lakers a little bit better um, because of their superstar talent at the top. Um, but what do you think about this Houston team and this small ball lineup that they've been running and, and they've they've actually committed to when you trade your only big on your roster, Clint Capella, you're essentially committing to this small ball lineup. What do you guys do you guys think is working? Um, do you think Daryl Moore is going to still have his job when the season's over? We, we're already hearing the rumors that Mike D'Antoni is probably out um, when this series is over with. Um, so I think. A lot of people um, are expecting the small ball lineup to pay off. And it looks, unfortunately, it looks like it's not necessarily working too well as the Houston Rockets um, are heading into the fourth quarter with a five point lead. Um, but again, another great episode, man. You guys, you guys, again, we appreciate all the support. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. We're still looking for a second host of the show. If that's you, if you fit the bill, if you want to be a part of a growing channel, Hey, let us know, man. We need somebody with drive, work ethic, who can show up every day and put in the work, not just on camera, but off camera as well. Uh, but it's an FYF Sports, another great episode. Again, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. When we go live, if you don't have that notification bell checked off or hit, you won't know. You won't know. And you don't want to miss out on those live debates once we start having them. So right now, we're just kind of, we're still setting things up. Again, well, before we do something, we don't just like to do it. We jump into a reckless. We want to make sure we have everything set up properly so we can give you guys the best content um, possible when we do go live. But again, FYF Sportsman, another great game breakdown video. And I'm out.